started, I guess. Uh, we have a we have a few things to actually talk about today. So, um, beginning with uh, a heads up that um, what would be our next meeting collides with the July 4th holiday in the United States. So we're not going to have it then. Um, so the next one will be July the 18th. So it's going to be a little longer gap than usual. Um, obviously, if if issues arise in the meantime that desperately need attention, um, please let me know and we'll we'll work around it somehow. OK, um, but uh, I'm going to be spending the fourth um, celebrating and setting off fireworks and all that fun stuff. So that's a, a ritual that must be observed. Um, let's see, other uh, things. N the only other, we have two, um, two release candidates out right now. Uh, the, the SL share viewer and the snowstorm viewer, which I, I didn't correct on the agenda because it just went out a couple days ago. Um, the snowstorm one has already had one bug reported against it that obviously needs to be fixed. And um, uh, that fix is in process now. So uh, that will get a refresh. Uh, so the so it is not likely to be the next one promoted. Wouldn't have been anyway. SL Share has been waiting its turn for a long time. Um, so um, those things are in process. Uh, we have a couple of current project viewers, nothing that you're not already familiar with. It's, it's all the usual suspects. Um, people will need the group and project viewer in order to use the group and feature that is um, out now on the simulator side. So um, those of you who have been waiting for that, and do we did Baker show up? Is Baker here? Uh, he said he was going to come by and take a bow. Um, so um, the code for that uh, is in the usual on the usual wiki page. Yeah, thank you. Um, And uh, um, and that's that's out there, and you should be playing with it and doing things with it. We are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know, we'll be we'll be looking to move that into a release candidate. Pretty soon, I don't, I'm not sure. I, I'm not. I don't have any information on on what the timeline on that will be. Um, so uh, I'm going to skip a little bit out of order here because uh, I want to sort of dispense with um, the one that's listed under other topics uh, quickly. It should should go pretty quickly. Um, number of layers. Um, apparently, there's been some some complaining, and I don't have the issue in front of the the specific issue in front of me. But there's been some some people discovering that they can't wear enough uh, layers on on different parts, and we want more. Um, and apparently some third party viewers have already raised the limit and discovered that it kind of works. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna, um, we're gonna take, suggest another approach. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I believe we have Nick's here to speak to that. Is that true? Nick's is here. Uh, I am here, yes. 
Yeah. So we're going to um, be, yeah, make better alphas. That would be, that's a, that's a good approach. The general approach we're thinking of taking is that we're going to change the global limit on the number of layers you can have and, uh, um, as opposed to the local limit on the number in a particular spot. Um, yeah, like, like with attachments, right? Like with attachments, right. Um, and uh, we haven't pinned that down, but the, the basically the uh, exactly what the number will be and whether or not that's the viable approach. But the that's the that's what we're looking at. Um, and <laughs> yeah, well, forty-two has obvious advantages, but we'll we'll uh, the purpose of this item in the agenda is to suggest that any of you who haven't already done anything about it. Um, hold off a little bit until we come up with what the what the supported strategy is going to be. Um, if you have suggestions about it, feel free to send them to me, um, and uh, we'll uh, I'll let you know at some future point um, exactly what our what our solution is going to be. But um, uh, I suggest that you not just arbitrarily keep adding to the existing limits and um, because we're liable to do something that's going to break that so um, better to better to hold off a bit um, well, firestorm and, has no intention to yeah I, I you had said that in email and that I appreciate that but um, uh, that's that's the safer approach, and I, I commend it to to everyone else as well. Um, we are going to see if we can do something about that. But um, um, so, um, but we I just wanted to let you know that we're we're um, actively seized of the issue, as it were. Um, the other thing to talk about, the other big topic of the day to talk about is experience tools. Um, you will have all noticed that experience tools have been on an, uh, a simulator RC for a while. Um, and, uh, and, and that's making progress. Um, and we're going to be sometime real soon now. Uh, almost certainly before, well before our next meeting. Um, I, you know, I don't like to give you dates because I'm almost always wrong when I give you dates. So I'm not going to give you a date, but um, we are going to announce uh, the the beginning of a beta program for for experience tools. We're going to make an effort to make it uh, pretty inclusive and and available to people. Um, and there will be a project viewer at the same time. The project viewer, uh, per our normal practice, will be the source will be public as soon as the project viewer ships, um, and um, and we'll start in on developing the beta program. Um, so we've got a couple of people here. I think I'm scrolling around. Troy, are you here? Uh, Somewhere. I am here. Yes. Troy here. is here and Dolphin is here, uh, who they're responsible for this. Um, sorry, it's a, it's a big list of people and I'm having trouble sort of scrolling through it all. Um, to talk about what experience tools are going to be like, what, what is going to, what is going to be happening. Um, don't pester them about dates. They're not going to give you dates either. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna be doing stuff. My my big point is that when this stuff comes out, if you want your users to be able to take advantage of it, it's going to be something you're going to want to integrate and release um, pretty quickly. I expect <laughs> that the beta program, not instantly, don't do anything rash, but um, but it is something that people are going to want to use, and if you don't have support for it, they won't even be able to use it as a user, much less as a creator. So um, that would be that would be a good thing to to be paying attention to um, and trying to get into a release as soon as you can. The beta program will probably last quite a while, several weeks at least. Um, so it's not like we're going to be throwing something out and saying do it now, now, now. Um, but 
um, expect your users to be asking for it. So, um, Troy, you want to talk a bit about what we're, what, what, how this is going to work? Yes, sure. Uh, can everybody hear me? Loud and clear. That's okay. Great. Um, so yeah, so as Oz mentioned, we are going to be releasing this really soon. Uh, there's the simulator component, which is already out on um, on Magnum, um, but the viewer is very it's it's very close. Um, and what the gist of Experience Keys does is allows you or allows your uh, uh, let's say a creator were to create an experience. Um, you guys are probably familiar with the excessive permissions pop-ups. You know, this object wants to do this to you. Do you accept? Um, we have a single point of opt-in um, where a user can come up to an object or maybe enter a region perhaps that has an experience running, and they are uh, given a dialog box that tells you what exactly the experience is and if there's one running. Um, has a link to experience profile so they can learn more about it and when they feel comfortable they can say yes I'd like to opt in so at that point all of the objects and you know just the experience in general running they will no longer be bothered by these excessive permissions dialogues um, that way it, it keeps them immersed in the uh, in the experience that's running um, if they choose that let's say oh this doesn't sound like a, a um, an experience I'm I'm um, you know, interested in, they could forget the experience, and it's different than blocked. Um, forgetting basically just says, "Oh, I read this, and this isn't what I wanted to participate in at this time." Um, if they know for certain that this isn't something that they're into, they can block it, and um, you know, they won't be bothered by any of the objects anymore. Um, no, it's uh, it's actually persistent. Yes. So if you were to log out and you were to come back to the same region at another point, um, if you've accepted it, you, you won't be able to, uh, I'm sorry, if you blocked it, you won't be bothered by the, uh, the, the dialog boxes, but if you did accept it, you won't be bugged by it either. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm trying to read through here the, uh, the chat here. Effect on things like Soul Seized HUD. What exactly is Soul Seized HUD? Can you explain? Yeah, that's something that actually is used to abuse people by retaining their uh, yeah permission to animate them without them really knowing it, and these people can be made to uh, play all sorts of stupid poses at the will of whoever owns the hunt. It's not specifically the HUD, actually, but there's been an it's an exploit from years gone by that uh, basically a script that's been given permission to animate an avatar can retain that permission unless it is reset. And what griefers do is they'll trick someone in, into sitting on something and then uh, unsit them and it brings that object to their inventory. Um, and then by resing that object, they can put animations in it and it will animate the target. Uh, and the target has no um, countermeasures to. Yeah, it's it's old school. It's been around many years. There's been many jeers. This Linen Lab has tried fixing it a few times, and one time they broke all the chairs in Second Life <laughs> trying to fix it, and they gave up. So basically, the question is, will this address that? Um, no, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> um, it's this is more this is more for creators who are behaving, right, um, who want to create meaningful experiences for their uh, fellow residents or, in some cases, customers. Um, we've, we've heard of a lot of different ways people can use this. Um, so, so it's not limited to games or, or whatnot, or, or, although it was originally uh, designed to create more game-like experiences. Um, y you know... If 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 this were to get into the wrong hands, let's say, um, you know, it, we do understand and appreciate that it could possibly be a big griefing vector. Now, that's why we have we give users the ability to block. And uh, if you were to block a uh, or an experience, none of the animations, attachments, or any other scripts that are associated with that will no longer be 
um, valid and at least to your avatar. Um, and we also included a way, an easy way for people to report objects that are um, uh, that are malicious. So let's say, for example, somebody wrapped up a you know big bowl of candy and says, "Come over here and have some candy. It's free." You click on it, and all of a sudden, there's a bunch of malicious scripts. Um, you know, the user can quickly go in and go into their experience um, floater, block that particular experience. They can report it. There'll be an actual button there that they can report. Um, you know, the, the the script and it pops up the abuse uh, report that also fills in. You know, who the experience owner is, um, what the experience ID. Uh, experience key ID is uh, that way our support folks can actually uh, you know take the necessary um, actions against that particular script and or person so um, we've tried to do as much as we can in terms of getting you know uh, I guess to soften the griefing vector um, but I'm sure our, our residents will come up with something crafty and uh, we'll fall back on the report uh, the abuse report the um... I understand. There's, Sorry, right, right, there, I... there's also a, a, a. Let me just quickly enhance that. There's also a way to see what experiences have been doing to you. There's there's a way to display, you know, what experience oh, was responsible for the fact that you got teleported or for the fact that you got animated. Right. All, all those are experience events that are recorded, and there's a dialogue for you to see them in. I don't have specifics, but I've heard that um, the. Uh, Unsavory bunch in SL are are very busy uh, with um, <laughs> with this, and and apparently they found all kinds of exploits that I don't know what they are. I wish I did. Yeah. Kind of mentioning this um, this terminology that we have, um, basically with. An experience you can um, once you've accepted it um, any permissions dialogue for the list of permissions that experiences grant will automatically be bypassed as if you had clicked yes on them um, the if you want to see that message again you can um, go to the experience profile and click forget and then you'll kind of see that pop up again um, and the, the third option would be to block an experience, and that will um, that will basically any time an experience or any time a permissions pop up is shown to you would be essentially like automatically clicking no on that um, that pop up and without you ever seeing it. And then in addition, any um, scripts that got permission via experiences will lose permission. And get notified that that the um, that the person that they currently have permission with has has um, revoked their permission. Can I ask a hypothetical? Um, let's say you guys are finished the job. You've got experience tools out there. Um, I know that the tendency is to then just sort of close that chapter and move on to something else. Um, can we be assured that as abuse reports come in and exploits are found, that Linen Lab will go back and patch those up as time progresses? Because well, you're not going to catch them all right away. Yeah, that's certainly the the intent, and and part of that's part of why we'll be doing a beta program is we expect that some of that sort of thing will happen during the beta program. But it's like any uh, any second life feature. I mean, we'll if if there are serious issues with it, we'll we'll try to fix them. We have a just to add to that. We have a mechanism uh, in place that we've we've had to use, uh, and it seems to work so far so good. Um, that if it, let's say the the violation was something really really bad, and we thought the only action course of action would be to um, to to shut that particular experience down. Those experiences have a key assigned to it, an ID, and we can simply just go in and, and revoke that key, and all nice. of the experiences will will be uh, will be shut down. Yeah, because like Trinity says, like media on a prim was, you know, widely requested for many years, and when Flynn Lamp finally did it, uh, because the, of its exploitability, it, the perception was it's 
it's risky, and so it, it's sort of never got adopted, which was a shame. Yep. Um, another thing I want to mention is that right now we're kind of testing the waters and figuring out how do we give these keys out now. Some of the things we were thinking about was, um, you know, we were going to make this thing, uh, you know, a key is only available to say a certain type of member, right? And we haven't we haven't decided yet, but this is something that, you know, could either be a paid option, maybe your Payment premium option, member. Good idea. Yeah, so that way it kind of already weeds out, you know, any of the riffraffs that just want to go in and grief. I mean, That's a good idea. if somebody gets their rocks off wanting to pay money. Um, you know, to get this perk, um, you know, we'll figure out a way to, uh, to we, can, we can still ban them. We can still revoke that particular key or license. That's, that's a great idea because that would also encourage content creators to get premium accounts again. I think that's a fantastic idea. Do it. Go for it. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, Troy, uh, Worley had a good question about the relationship between experiences and, and land ownership. Can landowners block experiences from running on their land? There, there is a relationship between an experience and reading the uh, the chat window. One second, sorry. So the question is, if a landowner is not does not want to participate in a particular experience, do they have the ability to block an experience running on their property? Was that, did you guys hear me? Yeah, um, right. So Dolphin, can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, um, there, we do have um, the option of any, having grid-wide experiences, but um, at the beginning, um, at least, we're just going to have um, experiences that have to be explicitly whitelisted to run on an estate. Um, once we, if if we do start offering grid-wide experiences, we also um, will have the option to um, block those on a parcel or an estate. Um, if uh, so, the the regular experiences have to be explicitly allowed. The grid-wide experiences can be specifically blocked. Um, on mainland, they'll will have to be done at a par at the parcel level. Um, for private estates, there is also um, an, uh, an an extra option that you can do that you can make your um, if your estate is private, you can allow people who are active in the experience um, they can come onto your land, so you can. Um, make sure that you know that you have this elevated set of permissions on anybody who's not explicitly on the allow list. Um, and if they block the experience, they will get uh, teleported away also. Do you have a wiki page somewhere describing what exactly an experience is? Because I'm a little confused with this new vocabulary here. Uh, we will. Yeah. When, when the, when the beta program is announced, a bunch of documentation will go out. Um, regarding group ownership, um, experiences will be owned by a, a single avatar, but they can associate the experience with a group. And there are two new group powers um, that go along with, with that. Um, the first is um, an experience admin, um, which lets you chain let edit things like um, the name and the description, um, basically edit the profile. Um, the second is an experience contributor, and anyone who has that role in a group owned, uh, in a group that's associated with the experience is also able to create content for that experience. Um, so in that, in that situation, uh, anybody who has the ability in the group to um, Add roles to to people would be able to control who can um, uh, contribute scripts to that experience.
So as you can imagine, at the very least, you're going to want to be able to uh, provide your users reasonably quickly with uh, the ability to accept and forget and block experiences and then of course to support creators there's a there's a bunch more stuff and some and there's some things for landowners so uh as dolphin said in chat a while ago a, a lot of what you'll want to support is ui um uh, i know that you all feel it's necessary to completely redo most of the ui that we provide and you know you should obviously feel free to do that but uh, you might want to take it our way um just to get it out the door relatively quickly and then and then rework it later well in uh, some of our cases our uis don't merge period so we have to sort of do our own take on it but we'd have the same options as long as we get the code quick like early enough right well the the, the code will come up when the beta program starts and the project viewer is available so um you'll you'll have it and can begin working with it um uh, you know as quickly as you as you want to uh, and uh you know i wouldn't i wouldn't put it in something you as usual i would i would suggest that it's not a good idea to call it a released thing until we do because we might change it um, let us get the uh arrows in our back on this one but um uh we'll we're going to move that along as as quickly as we think is prudent. Uh, we're at least just asking if you guys will set up um, a Linden region for testing, and and this should go without saying that uh, you know we have a big team of beta testers, and we're always more than happy to help Linden Lab uh, test these things before they go to release. Yeah, well, so we're going to have a couple of experiences available that people can, you know, go and participate in and accept uh, as part of the beta program. That'll 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 be out there right away. Um, and and then in terms of you know what other people create during the beta program, you know, it will depend on where they put it. Um, so we'll have a couple that are out there. Um, we aren't going to be uh handing out experience keys uh, that is the ability to create experiences you know generally um during that time it's going to be more restricted than that but uh but we'll that'll all be in the beta program announcement yeah i just but want yes, to add to the there'll be some that you can test that you can you can go to an experience right troy Yes. Um, I just want to throw out uh, a, a quick thing about the, the sample size. So we just chose a dozen because we wanted to just, uh, we wanted to start small. Um, we imagine there are probably going to be a lot of things that we may have overlooked, if possibly. Um, so I think really what we're going to try to do is just sift through all of the applications or at least the inquiries to participate. Um, listen to what kind of experiences they're trying to um, they're trying to create or, or convert if they've actually had an existing experience, and we just kind of go from there. Have you guys run out of questions already? I think we're just sort of soaking it in. <laughs> It sounds pretty good. My biggest concern is just security. I don't really know what an experience is, so I can't. Yeah, we're going to need, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll need, uh, I think some of us are probably drawing little bits of blanks in our mind of exactly what it's going to be. I hope it's going to be um, simple enough. Yeah, it kind of needs a picture. Yeah. I hope it's going to be simple enough that the average user, the layman user, will understand it, be able to use it, be able to create. And, and that kind of thing. Um, I, I think that uh, I, I think that they've done a, a pretty good job on the on the on the usability. Uh, I think it's and and um, uh, I've seen the uh, the draft version of the of the beta program Torley video. So uh, 
it will all be in there. Um, and but I, I would say the the simplest explan simplest way to put this is it's, is it's a way to bundle all the annoying permissions dialogues that scripts end up hitting you with into once at the very beginning. Would you like to do this set of stuff? You get to say yes once, and then nothing bugs you anymore ever. It's just you have said I want to be able to participate in this amusement park. You can participate in the amusement park. And later, if you decide that you don't like what that set of scripts is doing with that bundle of permissions, you can say, I don't want these scripts to be able to do that anymore. And they and none of them can do it anymore. So it's right. Debit, Auto attach. Okay, Trinity has a point. Debit permissions. Is this also applied to debit perms? No, it is not. Okay, good. Debit permissions are still going to happen exactly as they do today with um, a se completely separate um, dialogue from the regular permissions, and um, you will still people will still have to um, opt into those every single time. Right. Um, but but as as Worley said, it it does cover auto attaching um, and temper attaching objects, um, teleports, um, that kind of thing. Uh, the permissions are all or nothing um, for the experiences. Well, certainly I think we can all attest to being nagged by things like attach this to your avatar. I have a cat that does that in Second Life. So that sounds good. Look forward to actually seeing it. So this yeah. will improve your cut experience. <laughs> yes, and but actually, I mean, there's there's um, you know there's a bowling game, for example, which I was just introduced to yesterday that uh, you know has to ask you to attach the bowling ball to your avatar and things like that, and um, yeah, it can be annoying. So definitely good use cases on it. And I, I would really encourage you guys, though, to consider uh, making it a premium account feature for people who create the keys, the experience. I, I think that would go a long ways for revenue for Linden Lab, and also for the experience for the end user who isn't going to be griefed by. Yeah, we definitely don't want people to make throwaway experiences um, so they can grief people. Um, we we want to have a a you know a somewhat of a barrier of entry to it to make sure that you know the majority of people that acquire one are going to want to use it legitimately. Yeah. And and one of the one of the strong uh, one of the strong features of of the whole program is that experiences are traceable to their creators. Right. So um, if if we're getting a lot of complaints about a particular object um, that's acting through an experience key, um, we can trace that back to who got issued that key. Right. I mean, it's not it's not ambiguous. Um, so the the viewer side of this is basically this list of experiences you have granted permissions to and the ability to select one of those and remove it, right? That's that's yeah, the, the that's the really key part. Yeah. Yeah. The the yeah. majority of of the viewer side changes are managing this list of experiences, um, searching for experiences, and then the the last piece is um, actually associating an experience with an individual script. Um, so there's a, a change to the script editor also where you pick um, which experience you want associated with a particular script. Doesn't sound like something that's going to be too difficult to merge. Well, if it's mostly UI, that's certainly welcome. Yeah, well, all of the, all of the actual permission stuff, of course, is... Simulator Server, side. yeah. So, so yeah, the hard parts are not something you have to worry about. 
Um, there are additions to um, the the script editor floater and um, the estate management panel and the parcel management panel. Um, and then everything else is new floaters. Oh, that's easy then. Yeah, sounds easy. So then, as, in, as far as Firestorm's concerned, it's just a matter of timing. <laughs> we have to get that stuff, like, before we release something. The, yeah, the group profile, it's just a... Uh, the group profile should be um, fairly trivial to add. It's just a new name. There isn't any new management UI or anything for that. It's just a single... Uh, a another field in there, so that the group management UI should be fairly easy to implement. Um, something, something somebody just said about releasing reminded me of something else I was supposed to tell you that I forgot to actually put on the agenda. Um, so, so very, let me do it before I forget. Uh, very quickly, um, the Sunshine viewer that had AIS v3, right? Thank you, Troy. Um, went to the default release viewer this week. Um, mem, yeah, it was it was cohort memshine in its last uh, incarnation, and um, that is, you know, obviously the server side of that it was already on the grid. Um, so. Um, do let us know as you, uh, especially those of you who have uh, popular viewers with you know more than a couple of percent of, uh, or, or even even uh, single digit percentages of users. It would be good if you let us know when you're releasing versions that include using that, so that we can be looking for how that affects load and so forth. Um, we may be so. a while yet because we have uh, we've just merged interesting. Um, we're going to try to merge interesting. Memshine, um, group bands. Um, I think there was one other thing. We're going to try to get all that down and release it all at once. And, and maybe if the timing works out, we'll be able to do um, the uh, other merge as well. SL share, that was it. Thank you. Yeah, SL share. Right. And if, if the timing's right, we can do experience too. Get it all out there. Right. Well, uh, you know, obviously. Picking picking the contents of your bundles um, is uh, not a job I envy, um, and and is is your headache to to do. Um, but uh, good luck with it. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, the. Um, we will be very interested to see what the effect of, uh, especially Firestorm and Singularity adopting AIS v3 will be, just because you have more users than we do, and so we have, uh, you know, we, we have some idea what what effect our version of the viewer is having. Uh, we want to see what even more users has. Um, it does actually seem to help quite a lot, actually. Uh, no, we'll give you a heads up as always before we release. So, um, so I think that's all the topics we came to talk about. Um, I, I had one, but I so failed to more... put it on the agenda. Okay. Oh yeah, you had the. the I had the yeah. Height issue, right? Uh, okay, so. Um, I'm not a fangirl, <laughs> I'm just saying, but credit where credit is due. Um, we have a proposal, So, uh, but I want to start by expressing my appreciation and gratitude towards Linen Lab for the good work you guys have been doing, especially, uh, I mean, you guys have done service at appearance, uh, network improvements, thank you, Monty, materials, mesh, fitted mesh, mesh avatars for new people, uh, project interesting, which is really good, I might add. Uh, so far, it's got bugs, but everything does. Um, long list of other major investments, um, which have all gone towards making a realistic and immersive experience for residents in Second Life. Thank you. Uh, you've improved the user experience, and it's obvious to me that you understand the value residents hold towards uh, how their avatars appear to themselves and others in Second Life. 
um, and you've done a really good job. Uh, there is still, of course, some areas which could use some attention, which I'm going to bring up now. Uh, if I could ask everybody to camera over to my avatar, Jessica Lyon, uh, you will see that my avatar is hovering uh, about a foot off of my chair. This isn't because the animation I'm using is poorly made. Um, it's because the creator who made the animation made it on an avatar which was larger than my own. Uh, and as a small avatar, unfortunately I experience this type of thing frequently. And as you can clearly see, it does sort of break realism and immersiveness, doesn't it? And while I do like this animation, I currently have no way of correcting the offset, which makes it unusable for me. And now I'm going to stand up, and if I can ask everybody to camera down to my pretty little boots, uh, you'll notice that there's like this really obvious gap under my feet as I stand here on the floor. And while animations can frequently be the cause of unrealistic avatar height offsets, in this case it's the boots that I'm wearing. Um, footwear all have different height offsets, uh, and this is affected by various things in the way that they're created, um, as do other assets in Second Life. And so I think you're probably getting the general idea of where I'm going with this. Uh, the third party viewer created method for addressing this was inadvertently broken with the introduction of service side appearance. Um, to his credit, Nick Linden invested a fair bit of time coming up with a compromise known as Hover. And while we're all very much appreciative of that effort and to no fault of his own, unfortunately, it doesn't cover the biggest and most common use cases for residents. Uh, for example, uh, the current hover uh, does not work for the common sitting problem when I was sitting on that chair, uh, where avatars are either sunk into or hover above chairs in world. You all have seen this, I'm sure. The current system requires residents to own and be wearing the modifiable shape, so their shape has to be modified in order for them to adjust their hover. It re often requires a resident to go into and out of appearance, often repeatedly, until they get it right each time they change their shoes or anything else that affects um, avatar height. What we want to propose is a better way to quickly, dynamically, and instantly adjust avatar height offset without requiring modifiable shapes, without having to go into appearance, a way that will work for sitting, standing, walking, flying, etc. Uh, we've written up a proposal which we feel will we'll give you the best understanding we can of what the result should be, um, as well as how a few ideas uh, suggestions on how we think it could be implemented. Um, we can't pretend in all the server complexities of what we're asking for because we have no visibility into that. But we can speak, though, as customers, residents, developers. Um, such a feature will absolutely bring a high value to your customers in regard to realism and immersiveness. We've used, uh, we used to have such a feature, as you know, and, and we know, you know, just how popular it was. Huge. With all the work, time, finances, you have invested towards realism and immersiveness in Second Life, it simply wouldn't make sense not to address this problem. <laughs> Sales pitch much? Um, please consider bringing this functionality to Second Life. Uh, we'll be happy to, more than happy to work with Linen Lab in addressing it. And uh, the proposal link, if I can actually get it to copy, is here in nearby chat. And there is currently a JIRA associated to it there. Oh, too no. many people too many opening many the times. document. <laughs> Probably too many at once. Uh, we can copy paste that into that um, Jira if you guys want. So Z is the one who wrote up that um, that proposal. Uh, Z Re, uh, she's speaking in text in local. 
um, and she has some suggestions on how this can be done. We're open to different ways of doing it. Um, we just hope that it can, however it's done, uh, that it can achieve um, the, the user cases uh, properly and fully. Okay, well, this looks like a really good, thorough write-up. Um, I know that... Um, I know that so a couple next, of the... yes. Right, I know that a bunch of the Lindens here have a, have a commitment real soon now, uh, in the next few minutes, that they have to go away and get ready for. So um, I'm not going to ask anybody to respond to that now. In fact, I'm going to suggest that it's probably better if we don't. No, just think um, about it, and let's let's but, bring it up at the next it, meeting. Right, but as as Marty said in in chat, it's it's really great that it, that there's a that there's a real write up here that we can treat as a concrete suggestion. So, um, we'll we'll uh, take it under advisement, and at the very least. Um, probably be in touch with you about it um, even before then, but at the very least we'll, we'll be prepared to discuss it at our next third party viewer meeting. Um, uh, this, I mean, it looks, it looks like there's a good uh, explanation, at least of the, the rationale for why we need it. Um, and that was a, that was a terrific little demo there, Jessica. So, <laughs> um, uh, uh, good, good planning there. Um, so, uh, so we'll, we'll do that and, and we'll get, we'll get back to you. Um, thank you. Other, other topics before people have to disappear. Um, I'll, I'll do it for you this week, Jeff. Uh, can we work on cocoa bugs? Oh yeah. Cocoa. Um, yes. Um, yes. So, awesome. as you all know, um, Group Ban is in RC, uh, not in RC, sorry, in uh, Project Viewer, and we have a bunch of bugs that we're still working on. And I know Whirly's been filing bugs, which is always appreciated. <laughs> um, <laughs> like the moment I touch a button, I know there's going to be a bug from Whirly coming in. Um, so that's really appreciated. Please keep banging on it. Let us know if anything's broken. Uh, we are going to do some more fixes before it's production ready, but it's getting really close. Cool, and thank you. Um, group bands is something that we really need. Yeah, we do have um, some uh, fixes. The the alt cam bug is fixed. That's huge. Um, yeah, it's I. It's one that particularly um, bothers me. I'm not. Sh I don't. I don't think we've sorted out which. Uh, it will that go into going the into. next maintenance RC OZ. Okay. We've right. um, addressed a couple as well. Uh, we addressed the um, typing lag issue. I don't know the Jira. I'm sure Willie will have it instantly in a split second because she psychically knows these things. Um, and we <laughs> thank you, Paige. <laughs> Uh, and there was another one we addressed, uh, which I can't remember what it was. Uh, so pretty soon we might be able to actually block version 442, which would be nice. A lot of people still want it. Yeah. Um, if there are if there are fixes you've got that we don't, uh, that we ought to have, um, obviously. I'll point to that. Get, get them to us. Um, Jessica is commanding an army of robots, I can see here. I am. <laughs> no hu no humans can do that. Isn't that weird? Like, I don't know how Whirly does it, and Paige, Paige is new to us, and um, we just welcomed her to hell, I mean, to, to the team. Was it Whirly that uh, passed the Turing test for the first time that made all the headlines? 
<laughs> I want to state for the record, Whirly is Firestorm support and always will be. <laughs> we let her help now. out. We let her help you out, but she's ours. <laughs> I mean, what she well, does with our QA um, and even development, I mean, really is a little bit everything. Well, you know, um, it, it has it has been it has been suggested within the lab that we really ought to hire Whirly. No, no, but, no, 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 no. But not listening. Even no, no, aside no, 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 no. from even aside from the fact that it would annoy all of you terribly, and we not we annoying. genuinely don't want to do that. Um, I don't. I don't really see. You know, it has also been pointed you out that she's already doing a marvelous <laughs> job. Why should we do anything different? Uh, so, um, so thank you very much, Willie. You're very much appreciated by all of us. But rest assured. Um, but we can stop embarrassing her now. Um, uh, anyway, okay. Um, I know lots of the other Lindens here have to. Have Can to I just point out the disappear. elf in the room? Just, just sure. quickly. Hi, Abby. Thank you for coming. Ab <laughs> Abby's not an elephant, and everybody said hello, Jess. Oh, he just went away. <laughs> oh, there he is. He's back. Hello. Hi, Abby. <laughs> How are you guys? Good. It's nice to see you. It's good to see you here. I was kind of hoping yeah. you'd be here. Yeah, I did find time to pop in. It's awesome to be. It's awesome to see this whole crew here. It's 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 it's, it's really cool. It's always yeah, a big it's turnout. To see you. I mean, if I, I don't want to, I don't want to distract you from getting work done. But you know, if if no, anyone have questions you want to ask, that's sort of 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 the less geeky nature. I'm 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 here. <laughs> yeah, we were busy uh, sucking up to each other. <laughs> Yay! Anyway, Evie, I just want to say that um, I, I hear about your appearances all over the place, and I think that's fantastic. I'm, 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 I'm enjoying it. Uh, from I what I hear from the users. Morale, I think in Second Life. Yeah, from what I hear from the users, uh, they're really enjoying seeing you too, so. Oh, that's that's like an autograph for Second Life. Type hi to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bump into you all. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, and thank you, Troy and Dolphin, for coming, and Grumpity. Haven't seen you in a while. Oz, oh, so you got to keep getting more linens in here. Hey, how many more do you want? I got, I All got of a them. lot today. All I of got, them. I, I, I got yeah, a whole bunch cool. today. <laughs> no, don't uh, crash it. Um, I, I, I will... <laughs> I will try to I will try to bring you know everybody who is relevant whenever I can um, and a few that aren't. Uh, uh, Oz, do you want that proposal on that Jira in a comment? Yeah, just uh, you can you can actually do it as a link. Oh, on okay. The, on the Jira. Oh, maybe I'll let Whirly do that because she's like expert pro at that. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, and I will. I've I've got. Tabs open with with both the Jira and the uh, and the document, and I will make sure that I, I don't lose track of them. Oh, and Vera is quietly here as well. I see Vera hasn't said a word. He's like that even in real life. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good, uh, Monty. Thank you about sixty three eighty two. That. Uh, Nice. I hadn't heard that you were looking at that. Um, okay, I guess. I guess we are. So is that it? Pretty much done. We finished on time and not early. Yeah. We're still early. There's six minutes. 
Oh, that's true. There's still a bit of time. I'll just do a quick one. Oh, go for it, Monty. Um, the library work viewer is in QA. It should move along quickly. It'll be either a project viewer or a um, RC, depending. And as I am standing here, I am using an HTTP, HTTP pipelining viewer. Oh, uh, nice. It came together very quickly. I do have server-side work, but this is looking good. And I'm looking for some maybe enthusiastic testing people who are very distant ping time-wise from uh, Linden Asset Service. Mm, we have some Germans here. That would be good. Yep, Z, that's all yours. Oh, we got I'm Holland. About, Poland, sorry. I'm about 150 milliseconds away. So, um, so you got Ziri, you've got Pantera, you've got. Um, Whirly. You've got Latif. We, we used to have a, a guy who was in IRC all the time whose normal ping time was like 600 milliseconds. Wow. He was on a satellite link from somewhere in the South Pacific. Uh, sucks to be him. Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh man, you are, you are really more persistent than I am because I would definitely not play this at all with that kind of response time. Oh, what about the uh, crash starts? What what happened to those? Oh yes, uh, I'm sorry. I, the stat system was down on Monday, and I just got swamped and didn't get back to them. They they should actually still exist, so I'll I'll go back and try to get it. You've been sort of together. slacking ever since you came back from your holiday. I I have. I've picked up <laughs> some new responsibilities, and I I have been uh, I have been lacks in some of the old ones, and I apologize for that. But um, Thanks, Nix. Um, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, we're actually making progress on, on getting some new stats tools together. Um, so Harvest while the, stats. while the nature of the stuff I give you will probably change somewhat, I think the utility will go up a little bit so it may be harder to compare old old things to new things but at least it will uh it will have some more information in them i had that texture blur bug yesterday Thank you, Grumpity. I guess we should call it a day, right? It's Friday. Something like that. Ex except I do have a question for Ebby. Um, Ebby's, Ebby's, you missed Shoot, her. shoot. I'm here. I'm there. Oh, you were there. Okay, cool. I didn't miss. Um, I, I'm just curious as to what sort of ideas you're having to um, increase retention amongst new users. Uh, simply because you can't make second life simpler. Second life is a very complex place, and th there's no way you're going to be able to make it simpler and still satisfy the established residents. Cough mentors. Cough. Well, there are lots of different types of users, um, and I think we can make it easier for some users without losing the power uh, for other users. But yeah, that is a tremendous challenge of allowing for this incredible flexibility, openness, freedom, and at the same time, make it simple. Uh, I, I'm convinced there's a lot of things we can do, not necessarily in the short term, but uh, in the medium to long term, that's going to make uh, uh, things a lot easier. I mean, just just coming in and getting dressed is, is a major undertaking, uh, and it shouldn't have to be. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I think is geekier than it needs to be. What the hell does it mean to detach something from your from your avatar and stuff like that? So um, I think the user interface can can improve a lot. 
Um, and uh, obviously, a lot of the work that you guys have just discussed here will, will make things retention improve. When the quality improves, the performance improves, um, that will do a lot as well. Uh, it will just take a lot for users to, to notice and appreciate and, and therefore get stickier. But it, it seems to me the metric seems to indicate, you know, some, some potential extra stickiness is going on. We'll, we'll see. We have to wait a little longer to be sure about that. But um, but yeah, I, I'm not, when I talk about making it simpler, uh, I'm not trying, I'm at the same time not suggesting I'm trying to make it dumber uh, or, or less powerful. So it's, it's, it's going to take some smart people quite some time to, to solve for, but we have to try really hard for continuously to make it easier. Um, I mean, hopefully we can have something with the power of Second Life but appealing to you know hundreds of millions and not just a million uh, we have to figure out how to get there Abby, have you been um filled in on the old mentor program and if so would you consider bringing that back i actually had i was in world yesterday with a group of people um, many of them who have been part of that um and so we've, we started conversations. Uh, There's was, there was a lot of subgroups participating in that conversation, like yeah. of, of, of helpers. And um, uh, yeah, I, I think the difficulty probably is, is from our perspective, or, or why it might have been discontinued, was is, is how do you manage it at scale? How do you, who do you, how do you, who do you trust? Who do you, um, Who's, who's behaving, who's not behaving, uh, I think that might have been part of it. But I think it also, a lot of those efforts, I think, were unfortunately discontinued as part of like the, the big layoff back in the day when yeah. a lot of things were thrown out the window, whether it completely made sense to to stop those types of things or not. Personally, I'm, I'm, I'm in big favor of at least the beginning of what was the community, what was it called, community portal, community gateway program yeah. um, to enable creators to attract their own audience into their experiences. I think ultimately, if we're in a scale way beyond a million users, but you know, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, we have to allow creators to be able to attract an audience from the outside world directly into their experiences. Uh, and there, so there we have to think about what does that mean? That becomes sort of a co-shared, co-branded sort of onboarding experience for people uh, because there are too many unique communities and verticals and experiences that we can't correctly advertise and drive traffic to those experiences. And it would be much more powerful if the creators could sort of attract their own audience and that's more scalable. So um, that's, that's the way how I think about it. Um, but how long it will take to get there, I'm not sure. Did that make sense? It does. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you could see local, but there's people talking in local as well. Um, I was a former mentor for many years. And um, one of the things in my experience was that, um, first of all, it started going bad because they started letting just everybody in. And, and so, you know, we were training mentors who knew less than some of the new users were, which was horrible. Um, and then, of course, like you say, there was the layoffs. But in my experience, when there were mentors uh, or uh, just physical people at the welcome areas where people first enter Second Life makes all the difference for that user. And in fact, it was that case for me when I first came into Second Life. Um, my first experience was a bunch of avatars hunched over. Uh, some were clouds, um, nobody talking to anybody. And yeah. I just logged out. And I came back, you know, a month or two later, and um, there was a mentor there, and they helped me, and they explained things to me. They gave me landmarks, uh, explained as best you can what Second Life is. You, you can't really explain it, what Second Life is. You have to experience it, but did a good job, and from there I stayed, and that made me want to be a mentor. And then having been a mentor and having new people come in, it makes all the difference, not necessarily to bring back the mentor program, but to have physical live people present when yes. new people enter Second Life. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so we're actually experimenting right now where we're doing A-B test with um, sort of a welcome island as we know it and, and a separate welcome island with a, a, a live helper um, so we can 
A B test, sort of the, the conversion rates and the and the stickiness of the product. Um, obviously, one person is not going to do it. But we're, we're starting with one person that has a very consistent way of, of treating people coming in, and then we, we can see how how what the actual performance difference is between those two experiences. Uh, we also tried with audio on, audio off, and sort of doing these little A-B tests to see what works. And if we find that uh, having a live greeter there has a meaningful uh, conversion rate improvement, then we just have to figure out how to scale that so that we can have people to be able to meet everybody or Wonderful. significant. And so we'll, we'll, I, I haven't seen statistics come out of that yet. Uh, I saw some stats of audio versus no audio, and it was like a tiny, tiny plus for, for no audio. So we're now trying with, with no audio. Uh, or no speak, uh, so that, um, but other things we can do is to make sure that maybe only certain people can get to the, uh, Welcome Island, you know, having, uh, right, right. Having, well, that, having and that was cuckoo, the mentors. Yeah. And having cuckoo folks show up there, but the, the, <laughs> having, having a way to, you know, we, we can technically potentially solve it so that we don't have to have people kicking people out, but you could be sort of, uh, only new users or, and if, if you're a brand new user, it's a little harder to grief than if you're uh, yeah. an existing user. So anyway, it's it's stuff we're actively playing with. That's good to hear. Yeah. You know, the experience that Jessica describes why she stayed in Second Life is quite common. When you talk to people, everybody who is here for two, three, four or more years will have very similar story. They logged in. They met somebody who showed them two or three cool places and they were hooked. And that's why we are thinking maybe some sort of live help for the new users might be useful because it was useful to us when we first signed up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, maybe uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll try and figure out when we'll have, you know, statistically relevant uh, numbers from the test we're doing and then we'll, We'll go from there. Can I make one more suggestion quickly? Sure. Back in the Philip days, um, Second Life was in the news frequently. Uh, yeah. Lab did press releases frequently. Um, yeah. We've not seen press releases since M. Linden, really. Um, and I think press releases are really good. I know as a mentor, when a press release would go out to, say, BBC or whoever, uh, the alerts would go up and it's men all stations and all the mentors would land at all the, the help places and they'd be packed. Like they work. It brings people in a second life. Yeah. So this week I've actually talked quite a bit to press. Um, you know, I think, uh, Lynn and lab got a little gun shy because, you know, a lot of that press that took place, press, uh, yeah. in 06, 06, 07, 08, uh, back then actually created an overhype. Uh, which then had sort of a, a backlash uh, and, and got to a point where it became underhyped. So what was super positive became negative when it would probably didn't deserve to be as positive as it was portrayed, and it certainly didn't deserve to be as negatively portrayed as it then later was. Uh, and now time has passed where people have sort of started to forget about the negative aspect. They sort of remember... Oh, most people I talk to are like, oh, it's still around. They remember the positive bump. Yeah. And now they go, oh, it's still around. And like, sure it is. So I've spoken to a, num uh, a number of press, and there'll be more today and more next week, to just reset. Uh, the Oculus has sort of helped us uh, get access to press again, because now the whole like, notion of virtual worlds and virtual reality and all that stuff is cool. It's, it's like cool and hip again. So we can go in there and say, oh, and oh, by the way, when you think about virtual worlds and when you talk about it, we yeah, are the, the biggest, the most successful uh, virtual world that exists on this planet to this date, uh, 11 years in. No one else is even close. Uh, and just trying to get that into their heads so that they can't keep talking about this stuff without realizing that we are number one and we're the most experienced when it comes to what I consider as close as to the ideal virtual world as you can come. Although I would say we're still far away, but no one else is even close to us. So uh, we're having those chats and we're also telling them, which I will tell you now here, that we are talking about the fact that we're investing heavily in a next generation uh, platform 
which will take quite a while to get out. So you might start seeing that in the press. And we don't say much more than that, other than we're heavily investing, we're heavily, we're going to hire a lot of people and uh, investing in, in a, a next generation platform built from the ground up to take us to another level. Um, and uh, Is that so, a high fidelity thing that uh, Philip is running? No, 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 no. He's he's doing a, something completely different. Um, I mean, he he might he's also working on something similar, but I think we have different approaches. Um, and we do talk. We do talk now and then. Uh, I think he's doing some things that are kind of cool and neat. Um, you know, the avatar facial expression stuff is kind of cool, but you know, the problem is no one has uh, cameras like that, so it's not necessarily uh, a valid thing, except for as a demo. Uh, until more users have those kinds of cameras, but Intel and others are working on stuff So hopefully people will soon have those kinds of cameras so then we can do stuff like that as well The other thing he's doing is this extremely distributed server side, you know, sort of metaverse play and uh, I, I'm not sure why um, You know compute power is decreasing and we can obviously I think People here expecting a next generation platform working on can probably do second life with 20% of the sort of hardware resources we have today. Uh, we could be much smarter about it. And um, um, so I, I think we're gonna spend more energy on trying to create an incredibly high-end experience um, rather than focusing a lot of energies on this sort of decentralized uh, metaverse sort of componentry that he's working on. Um, so we talk every now and then, we share some notes, um, and we, we've talked about the things we maybe want to do together. You know, for him to go build the full economy and a Linden type of thing is would be quite an undertaking and all the compliance work we have to do. So he might look to us for something like that, and we might look at him for some other things. Uh, we'll see how things go. But uh, for now, we're, the things we're working on are completely independent and separate. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it's important to remember that uh, not everybody wants to transport their physical self into virtual world, and that's one of the key uses of Second Life. You know, people yeah. want to express their fantasies, want to be supermodels in in virtual world, and yeah, you can, you can, you, you can still potentially have. It's, it's not not always desirable. No, no, no. I'm not saying that you necessarily want your uh, physical persona to be transmitted in, in, in Second Life or a virtual world. You, you might want to be uh, female instead of male or what have you, um, uh, or, or a completely different animal. Uh, like we have, we have plenty of examples of in this, this space here right now. But you might still want to express your facial expression as to happiness, pleasure, sadness, those emotions could be transmitted regardless of the persona that you have uh, in world. So that could still be an interesting technology to explore. And it obviously wouldn't necessarily be required. Some webcams uh, actually come with software that, that uh, instead of representing or transmitting your face to the person you're speaking to, it transmits an animated character, but the facial, like you say, the facial expressions match that of your own. Yeah, exactly. And then it's completely up to the user whether they want that face to be a, a close representation of their real self or, or something completely different. Uh, Abby, you mentioned um, hiring. Um, yes. So when Linen Lab uh, closed up the offices, uh, oh, I see the chairs are being moved around. <laughs> when Linen Lab uh, shut down offices overseas and, and elsewhere, you and not to say that there's any lack of talent at the lab. It's incredible how much talent you do have. But your gene pool is a little bit limited because you're only, you know, hiring in Seattle, uh, Boston, and so on. Will you guys consider hiring outside of those states? Uh, I think uh, if... If I mean, we certainly do have incredible talent that's in, in not in one of those three locations. Uh, I mean, we have an incredible guy in Austin, Texas, and where have you. So, um, that's I, not too far from Austin. <laughs> which, which, uh, so I, I'm open to it, uh, but we're gonna try and focus on, on getting people into you know those three locations. <laughs> Um, but, you know, if you have world-class talent that can't be in one of those locations, then we'll take it case by case. So that's not a 
strong no and not a strong yes. It's just, you know, we have to take it case by case. Well, it wouldn't be for me, obviously, but just that it's nice to know that the lab would, is, would be willing to hire outside and, you know, possibly get some, because you had, you know, Babash, Lyndon, um, I don't know if you if you remember him or met him, um, is from the UK, you know, there's just some amazing talent out in the world and um, who would be yeah, I think, working here. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we, we came extremely decentralized, um, not only geographically, but probably also um, structurally. Um, and it probably got to a point where uh, it was difficult to perform at scale because it was, uh, I, I refer to as Lindel Lab grew up as, as a, an organization based on sort of almost uh, anarchy principles, um, which can make it difficult to, to do things um, at scale uh, with, with you know, clear priorities and clear direction when everybody's sort of tugging a little bit in separate directions. So, and, and those things can be more difficult to do when you're very geographically distributed to, to do it in a more coordinated fashion. And, and there's a lot of value in, in the types of interactions you have with people just arbitrarily in hallways and kitchens and stuff that sort of gets lost a little bit when you have remote people. Uh, but there are also people like, you know, we have Oz here who's working remotely by his beautiful little private lake. Um, and uh, some people work very effectively remotely and, and others um, manage to hide and, and not perform as well as you would like. So it all depends on the individual and, and the skill set they have and, and the role they would have, et cetera. So. Well, Annie, I think you had a question and I cut you off, sorry. Oh, Annie typed it. As a networking administrator, it would not be bad to hire people. Oh, no. Annie, what was your question? You started asking a question, then I cut you off. Just a question that I had, or the comment, rather, the comment that I had with regards to the advertising of Second Life is how would I say that? The negativity came from that was that people thought it was about sex. Why not market if if Linden Lab chooses to market this? Why not market this from the aspect of being designers, such as clothing designers and other thing and other things? Yeah, I mean we we have with lots of different audiences. Uh, I mean if you, I think if you look at the new Second Life homepage, I mean we did that rather Great job, quickly. By the way, yeah, thank you. I mean, we, we did that rather quickly, but I think that is a little bit more in the spirit of what you might have hinted at, uh, sort of speaking more to the creators rather than the consumers. Um, but we clearly are going to have a lot of consumers that are not necessarily, you know, primarily focused on coming in here to create things like many of you are, but just want to hang out and chat and socialize and and, and buy stuff and be like most of us are in normal life, which are <laughs> consumers uh, going on vacation and enjoying ourselves. So we have to sort of speak to lots of different audiences and ultimately, um, and I think it, it steered too much towards, I would say, the, the, the cheap, uh, you know, bikini type of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but, you know, there's lots of people, I mean, look in, in newspapers, what you see for advertising, and there's a lot of, you know, hey, travel to the beach and, and uh, have, go on a vacation, and it's, it looks the same. And there, for some people, uh, Second Life is, is like a vacation. Uh, so we kind of have to think of that kind of an audience as well. But I think it, it steered too much in that way. And uh, um, so that's why we made those modifications to the homepage to be uh, also, with the, the video that we worked with Drax, or that Drax made for us, yeah, good video. Um, sort of to give people a, a more sort of understand the breadth and depth of the types of experiences and content that exist in, in uh, Second Life, rather than what you know the stereotype might might some have arrived to uh, over time. I think we all know how difficult it is to uh, describe what Second Life is to a friend. So we can only imagine, you know, the, the complexity of describing what Second Life is in a 30 second advertisement um, to <laughs> strangers. Good luck with that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a bit and that's why, that's why ultimately I think it's going to have to be a shared responsibility between us and the creators right. to it's bring an audience in. Because if, if I'm talking to, let's say, a vampire community, I, I can't do that as well as the vampire community itself could do, I hope. And they know where those users might be in, in the real world and how to bring them into that experience. And when you do that, we have to somehow share the responsibilities while well, you're coming into that experience, but you're also coming into this much bigger thing called Second Life, where there's also all kinds of other things. And we have to share the burden of training them, having them understand how the overall system work, but also have them focused on getting into that one experience and at least get attached to that one thing. And then they'll wander from there rather than trying to shove them into this one generic front door and then go, okay, now good luck finding something, uh, which I think is, is a difficult proposition to solve for. I understand that, Mr. The reason what I'm saying is that if you market it off as being able to do a product that is able to do things that create for applications for automotive industry as well as other things, you might actually draw some people, some developers, such as Harley Davidson, into this community. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if you can see local. Gibson asks, uh, since the adult aspect of Second Life is so huge, has Linen Lab considered doing targeted advertising for that market as well? I, I haven't actually talked to anyone about doing uh, target advertising for that. Um, uh, I, I've, I haven't spent any energy on trying to figure out how to, to boost that, or also trying not spend any energy on figuring out how to <laughs> do the opposite. So I, I'm, uh, I haven't, like, yeah, since I started, I just haven't dug into that. Like Oz said, doesn't seem to need help. <laughs> you no, know, it seems to. Uh, it's doing yeah. that quite well on its own. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, I can't tell you how just, many times I sat at Help Island and users came in and said, "Okay, where's my penis?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if if that's the first thing you you ask for when you come in, then you clearly have some preconceived notion of what Second Life might be. That might be yeah. a little bit. Uh, there was a lot of that back then, unfortunately. Yeah, and uh, you might, you know, there, there might be, at some point, you might have to have multiple brands. I mean, I've been in a situation before where we had a service that could service a lot of different things. And at one day, you just realized, you know, we can't have lawyers and, and phone sex, legal advice and phone sex side by side in the same directory. It just doesn't work. <laughs> you can't. You know, the, the lawyers will not get any business if, if, if you have, you know, phone sex right next door. So, um, you know, uh, there has to be some, some clear separation at times, and sometimes it has to be all the way to the brand itself. But hopefully we don't have to do that. I you just want to bring... So go ahead. I just want to bring up one thing. You know, when uh, uh, I'm... Uh, most of us here are developing uh, alternative viewers for accessing Second Life, and a lot of us here are programmers and developers. And one of the things that really is stopping us from making great new Second Life experiences is the scripting language that is used here is, is you know, something really ancient and dusty and horrible. Yeah. And and we had a we had a. Linden Lab had a program to, to, to bring that up to date with a C sharp scripting and it was going well and it was about to go into beta. And then the huge uh, closing of the UK the office happened yeah. and, uh, and layoffs and, and, and it was really sad to see that project that was really, really close to, to, you know, enabling us to make really amazing new stuff that it was, it was canceled or mothballed, as they called it at the time. I just want to bring this up to your attention if, in case it ever became, you know, relevant again to look into, you know, providing the, the content creators with the modern level scripting for Second Life that would allow us to make new, new, you know, exciting stuff for this platform. Yeah, so obviously um, the next generation platform will have a completely different scripting language, um, you know, 
modern. Um, probably on top of Mono still with, with support for C-sharp and whatever else you, you can do on top of Mono. Uh, I have no idea. This would be more a question for us, you know, whether that's something we would prioritize for Second Life and whether it, it can also be done for Second Life or if the sort of backwards compatibility issues there would just be too much of a nightmare to solve for. I, I don't know. Uh, so it's it's something to bring up with, with Oz. Uh, about that new platform, two questions. Um, one is mine and, and one is uh, Lassie from our my QA team here. Um, open source? <laughs> and the second <laughs> question from Lassie is, uh, will that platform be compatible with the current assets we have now? So um, the way we're th talking about it right now is that we're starting from a perspective that it's in the spirit of Second Life. But it's, we don't want to constrain ourselves with the past either. So okay. if, if that product would end up being worse or less capable uh, because we tried to constrain ourselves to force ourselves to some level of backwards compatibility or, or you know, with regards to assets or something like that, then we would rather make it better rather than you know, get forced into some sort of incrementalism because of, of the past. So obviously we want to make it as easy for people as possible to be able to migrate into this new product, whether it's their, their social graph, their, their, their groups or their, their content. But if we find that we want to do something that is so different uh, with regards to content or user experience that it's going to be more discontinuous um, and rather than simple evolution it might be more of a revolution where it, it might not fit and then we don't want to a either spend you know we don't want to sacrifice what what the next thing can be because of what what we've done so far um so it'd be great if it'd be easy for everyone to just pack up and drop in and there it is and now everything's better um but w we might not achieve that um uh, so uh but there's it's still so early that it's it's tough uh, to know all the answers into the details. Um, but I'm, I'm saying let's not constrain ourselves. Let's carry forward the spirit and let's carry forward the, the idea. Let's carry forward what what it was Second Life was trying to achieve. Uh, and let's take all the things that are, that are great, uh, but then let's not get completely, you know, uh, rolled up into a ball of complexity for, you know, compatibility's sake. Part of the spirit of Second Life um, has been for many years uh, the nature of it being open source and, and um, that very nature is, is helped with third party viewers have helped um, Linen Lab over the years with um, identifying um, features that your customers really want and, and we're able to do that because we're customers too. Um, so I, I'll reiterate my question. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, so right now we're actually suggesting that it's not open source to start with. Okay. Uh, but as we think about extensibility and how you guys can contribute to making it better, um, it, the, the, it might not be that the, the only answer is open source. There might be other solutions to it. Um, so, uh, so it's not a requirement from day one that it's open source. But like I said, day one was like very recent. <laughs> And so it's just the other beginning. And actually, right now, I'm missing. The, I've already missed the first half hour of the of the demos from from the first sprint, oh, which sure. people showing geeky stuff downstairs that I don't know some things are starting <laughs> to kind of function with the new platform. So, but uh, I'm happy to chat with you guys here. I, I, I know that probably many Lindens harbor negative uh, feelings about open source, but you shouldn't listen to them. You know, they are not <laughs> always right. And and if there was no open source, I guarantee you that Second Life would not have survived some really bad decisions that were made for three or four years ago. Yeah, well, and and open source certainly had its problem moments early on, and I, 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 I understand. Yeah, I understand and until the problems. You, you don't have 100% of control. And companies like to have 100% control of everything. But that doesn't always work because, you know, it's hard to be right 100% of the time. So yeah. I said, you know, just keep an open mind and don't always listen to those who harbor negative uh, emotions toward open source projects. 
Yeah, well, actually, you know, the, uh, just very quickly to, to that, um, there really is not anything like the hostility towards open source that there was when I joined the company four years ago. Um, there, there just isn't. Uh, I mean, um, I, I, I'm not sure I can explain why that is. But um, well, I think it's you. I think it's you, us. Well, <laughs> well, I don't. No, I, I think it's more the the third party. He doesn't need more ego more... boost. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, but I, I think it's it's true. I mean, you, you can you can manage an open source program in a bad way and in a good way. And I think Oz has helped us go from a bad way to a much better way. So the relationship with you guys is much better, and the process is much better. The communication is much better. And, and if you do it right, it's obviously very powerful. So there's no generic anti-open sourceness going on. But this product is so early with so much complexity that uh, we didn't want to add that on top. It might it might, doesn't necessarily mean that it might not become open source later. It might not mean a lot of things. But um, we're, we're not starting open source. So I want to be just straight so up with that. Just give, let me give you one example. I maintain a text client for Second Life. And there is a huge community of people who cannot see that well to use the graphical client. And they, they rely on, on a system that has open protocols where I can go and create client that has a text to speech, that has a screen reader support. And you as a company, you cannot, you know, uh, satisfy every little niche but it really you know makes a difference to a huge number of people to be able to access the platform in a way that is allowed by having an open standard for accessing it yeah um so another question that was asked um is this new system intended to replace second life or work in parallel with second life well, it's obviously going to work in parallel for, for a long time. Okay. Um, and, and I think it will depend on the success of the new platform. Uh, it will depend on the success of Second Life. Uh, but the, we have no timeline for where there would be some sort of cutover. Or and it might be in parallel for, for a long time, forever. For We don't know. I think that will sort of... We have to see it play out. So there's no plan uh, uh, one way or the other, other than we're going to try and make this thing so great that hopefully, <laughs> if we do it so great that users just go, you know what, I'm going to go over there instead because it's much better. Then we've done a good job. Uh, if for a lot of people this is still a better place uh, three years from now, then then it might play out differently. So we'll, we'll see. Are you, well, um, I think one thing presume? you guys are. Go ahead. Shoot. Someone. Lassie, go ahead. I think one of the things you guys are overlooking with not bringing assets from this one to the new one is people spend a lot of money on the assets they have now in Second Life. And. I can't say for sure, but I know myself personally. I'm not willing to start over from scratch to just dump everything for a new grid. I mean, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars here over time. Yep. yep. And uh, so uh, I'm sure whether we do it or uh, I'm sure there will be ways for people to bring assets over, but we might. Uh, there's also a lot, I think, a lot of content's been created in life that I think should be created in a different way or could be created in a much better way. And, oh, great. Uh, and we don't necessarily want the, the beginning of this new experience to be shock full of, of a lot of the content in Second Life that's not great. Um, so it's, it's kind of an interesting problem we have there. So I'm sure whether we solve it or someone else solves it, I'm sure there'll be some import, export, import for, for things. But we don't necessarily want someone to come new into this new world that can have such a, a whole other level of, of quality and fidelity to suddenly just be completely populated with, with, with Second Life content either. So You don't want um, hair with 250 prims with 10, 24 textures on every single one of them. I, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. And there's script in every prim. Are you, yeah. um, in, in doing but this, is going, are you is splitting resources? Like, obviously you're using some of your current resources, but are, are you hiring new people for this? Or are you taking some people away from their SL tasks to do this? Um, uh, we, we are both. 
Um, so, so us will will, will steer a, a group of, of engineers that will be um, fairly small in, in in compared to what we've had over the last couple of years, uh, focused on on Second Life, uh, whereas the majority of existing resources and new resources will be focused on on the next platform. Really, already wants to start finding bugs. I don't know if you can see that in local. <laughs> <laughs> is it is the new platform also going to be focused on on user generated content? Absolutely, hundred percent. That's what I mean by the spirit. It's the same. Yeah, one of the strengths, one the the killer feature of Second Life is user generated content. Yeah, and and one important thing. I think is that, you know, many people complain, yeah, they import 200 textures into this, but you you sort of need to technically allow non-professionals to be able to participate into this because yeah. Blue Mars has tried to make, you know, a virtual world high fidelity, but where only a professional who knew how to use Maya could participate and that didn't go anywhere. Yeah. So, so I think it should be kept in mind for this next generation platform is that you allow regular, non-professional, non-3D designer to be able to put a couple of cubes together and arrange their house or whatever, and not yeah. limit yourself to content generated by professionals. I agree completely. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take revenge for Thanks, Trey. for Ebe embarrassing me a little bit earlier um <laughs> this the, this next generation thing that, that he's been talking about had its genesis before he arrived um the we've made much much more progress since ebe joined us than than we had made before um and i think that one of the most important um, reasons for that is that is that uh, he asked a lot of hard questions. One of which was, "Who's the primary customer?" And the answer that we discovered, we all agreed on, and that he has maintained uh, as a central point of design is that the primary customer is the content creator. That's who we really want to drive this for, and and but, that needs to but, encompass a range of content creators. But that's what it's about, and that has been true of Second Life too. I mean, it's um, and and will continue to be. Yeah, with without the content creator, Second Life would be very empty. <laughs> that's a problem OpenSim deals with regularly: is, is um, chicken or egg, right? Uh, users or content creators? Who comes first? And without the content, there's no users. Without users, it's hard to get content creators. I really think that the key of Second Life success was a very low barrier of entry to becoming a content creator. Yeah, I agree. Well, um, Ed, I'm thank pop... you so much for coming. Yeah, and I'll try and pop in the future. I don't, I don't want to, you know, uh, screw up this great meeting you guys already have, but I'll, I'll pop in and listen in to you guys uh, in, in the future, and uh, maybe we can find another forum to have more conversations, and certainly once, probably not till later, late this year, or early next year, that we start to sort of crack open the door uh, for a select few under NDA kind of people to start poking around with, with sort of the next generation stuff, so. Um, that would be great. But, yeah, um, and I think you'll find great resources for that in in this group here. Oh, yeah. for sure, for sure. Um, j just to make something clear, though, Webby, uh, Whirly Fizzle belongs to us. We'll lend her to you, her. but you can't have her. I, I heard I heard uh, Oz got rejected on that idea, so yeah. I, I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> put, put her on the top of your list as a tester. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna lend you out, Whirly. Don't worry. Okay. And thank you, Abby. And we'll look forward right. to having you just come and listen in. It'd be great to have you here just to listen in on the meetings. All right. Thanks, guys. See you guys soon. Thanks, Take Abby. Care, Abby. Bye bye. Well, that was nice.
And now we all have some. Yeah. That was very cool. To consider as open source developers. Well. <laughs> I know it's still a ways off. I know. I know. It's it's <laughs> it's it's definitely not imminent and. Um, on the fact that we are continuing to do things with Second Life. We are. So you want to yes. see the Osborne effect us, in other words. Jess, you missed your chance. Oh, I had a chance to fire you? Well, that too. You, you, you can have that chance any day. You, you'll never miss that one when you decide to take it. Should have asked Debbie out to a Q&A. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Hey, Oz, um... So I just to uh, confirm, is it all right if we post our videos like we normally do covering all this last half hour or so? Uh, yeah, it's okay with me. Uh, I'm... Okay. I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't something that was... Thank, thank you for asking. I like this new spirit of openness. Yeah, definitely. That's huge. You know, the, the I haven't seen it since Philip. Never, and yeah, we, um, never heard about this, and you know it would be all. It's been yeah. It's greatly missed. It's a huge thing for residents in Second Life, I think. Yep, yep, yep. And the the, the other day with the MySQL and inventory trouble and that and that post they made it was really great. And now this and I'm 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 really happy with uh, with how things are working with the at yeah, the yeah. lot. And that's not something you'll hear from me that often. <laughs> I, I I have actually pointed out that um, you saying internally that you say you particularly saying nice things about us is especially valuable <laughs> and remarkable. Uh, so so uh, <laughs> you you want honest critics, don't you? Us admit it. Nobody wants yes men all the time. <laughs> no, we I've don't. I've been accused uh, a lot lately of being. Don't. Like a fangirl because I've been praising Linen Lab, and I'm not. And and I look forward to you guys doing something I can criticize a few for again. But there hasn't been much lately. Well, no, I'll but... see if we can arrange something for you just to keep your reputation intact. Oh, good. Yeah, hopefully Second Life 2.0 will uh, have fixed the uh, group chat. Thing. We what, we we are we are actually investing some effort in group chat even even now. Um, it's that's not going to be a quick fix. Um, unfortunately, it is. We have looked at it well enough now to be sure that there is not a magic bullet available that we can that we can fix it with but um but uh, that we, we we also have not run out of ideas for things to to think about ugly so networking they... issues yeah. uh, I, don't, I don't want to get into it it's the problem is uh, <laughs> basically the architecture that was started with which meant that we were only talks to 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 region and regions have to uh, act as proxies for everything, including group chat. So the group uh, chat service has to track you around as you move around the grid, where to send the message, and that's expensive. That that is that is an important part of what's going on. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, and it, it's also it, it's also in fairness, it's also true that there are not actually a lot of chat systems that have as many active users. Um, in you know per within a channel uh, as some second life groups do um, and uh, it's that uh, we actually do pretty well on small groups uh, it, it, it's fine there aren't a problem it depends on where your group is yeah uh, I mean if you end up with a server that doesn't have any of the big groups on it all the groups on it will be just fine uh, yeah uh, so, so you are now the, the chief and boss of uh, Second Life uh, Software Development. Moving up in the world. I, I'm my new title is technical director of Second Life, which means I so take the blame your, for a lot of stuff. 
<laughs> we always knew that you will be end up the one to turn the lights off when we. <laughs> I I have so no intention not... of turning any lights off. I have no no intention at all. Uh, in fact, we're right now we're engaged in you know a process we go through periodically of of figuring out what the next uh, you know project set of projects is going to be. So um, um, uh, yeah, nobody answered that question directly. Z, yes, the new thing will be cross-platform. Uh, in fact, it'll have more platforms than we have now. Yeah, it has to be mobile. You know, everything is mobile these days. Um, <laughs> I don't know about Plan 9, but um, yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, we're we're planning what we're going to be doing for new things in Second Life. So, uh, and, and you know, Experience Tools is coming out. There's, there's, there will be more. Yeah, I don't think fixing avatars is going to be on agenda anytime soon. <laughs> we we got a contact from a, a, an outside design group that has a proposal. Say they have a proposal for us about that. Um, I'm waiting for the contribution. About what? What? What was that? Better avatars. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Um, so, I mean, that's that's not something that we're liable to take on anytime soon uh, in house. Um, it's a it's a it's a big that's a big big job, um, but um, mesh avatars probably. But if I if I get a good proposal from outside that we can actually do, we'll, we'll maybe do it. Yeah, Trinity, I agree. It's going to be very hard to you know argue for spending much time on improving Second Life. Well, we no, we are going to be spending time improving Second Life. It's just avatars isn't the way to spend that time. That's all. No, no, but I mean, you know, this. I was talking about the scripting thing, and and I don't think how you can justify, you know, doing something like that now. Uh, scripting is probably not, you know, a major re overhaul of scripting, including layering as something else on top of mono, is probably not going to end up on the is is not going to end up on the list just because. Um, that's a that's a really huge, uh, highly esoteric job. I mean, we're going to be looking for things that directly affect users as much as possible, right? That get new capabilities in the hands of content creators and and participants of all kinds. I have um, a quick question. So. So uh, it, it's actually kind of not fair to ask me questions about about any of the new stuff because I'm completely dedicated to working on Second Life. Um, I'm, I have a quick have, question. Yeah. And it's not about the new Second Life. <laughs> How come you always take away the chairs when we end up standing around for 30 or 40 minutes after the meetings? <laughs> uh, it's just my way of saying the official part of the meeting is over. That's the way, you know, when you spend too much time at somebody's house and they're just trying to hint to you, they open the door, you know. Start putting away all the glassware. Start putting this stuff away, yeah. Cleaning <laughs> <out>. <laughs> yeah. GTFO. <laughs> Let's just, uh, I just, you know, just want to bear in mind, um, my weekend starts when this meeting ends, basically. Yeah, mine too. So <laughs> what are we still doing here? Abby's gone. Second life is over as we know it. This is going to be all over SLU. You realize that? Uh, I assume so. Uh, it isn't already. It probably already is. <laughs> I, I would bet there's already a thread. Yeah. Yeah, it's recorded. I think if Pantera's here, she's recorded. Thanks for uh, I, you Trinity. I, I I know that that's that that's a possible <laughs> interpretation. Um. It, it, it shouldn't be. Um, I, I mean, I, I hope that I have enough credibil credibility with you folks that you at least individually will will hear and and believe me when I say we are we are not in any way giving up on or backing away from Second Life. We're going to continue working on it and doing new things with it.
Yeah, but from was from what was said recently, like really recently, Act Three has begun. Well, Act well, Three is being script written. That's that's the. It, it, but but those two aren't aren't the same thing. I, I mean, we're a business, right? I mean, that's the bottom line. We're a business. If Second Life is still popular with its users and still making money, it's going to continue to exist for as long as that's true. Um, and uh, there's there's no percentage in us doing anything else. Um, in any event, um, Second Life right now is the business. And so we're going to continue investing in it. Well, I'll take your word for it, Oz. Well, I in the meantime, the way you. I see it is we're doing what we're doing because we're improving the user experience. And we can do that as, you know, it's for the user we do it for. So up until the users are no longer enjoying our improvements, we'll just keep doing it. And I'll catch y'all later, folks. Poof. I think it would be really useful for Linear Lab if they okay. could somehow figure out the way to to harness all this experience we all Absolutely. have into designing this new thing. Yeah. And the air or whatnot. But I think you know in the in the past Linden Lab has proven, you know, when they decide to go their own way and don't listen to anybody, it always ends up really badly. So if if there was a way to somehow harness all this experience and help out design this new thing and not only think we know best, we will do it uh, the way, that would be beneficial and win-win for everybody. Couldn't have said it better. Well, I think, I think that you've all seen that we're communicating better. And... You guys know how to make money. We know how to make uh, things popular. Combine those two things, and you've got a win-win. Yeah, but I, I still, uh, you know, have doubts about the ability to, you know, determine priorities correctly, because I, I see, you know, how much effort was invested in stuff like pathfinding, and but nobody really talked to the Second Life community if those things are really important to us. And pathfinding is cool and all, but it's a niche, minor thing that nothing in the grand scheme of things, it will not do anything for Second Life. Well, um, you know, I don't want to debate the merits of any, any given feature, but it is basically my belief that with a almost no exceptions there are there's almost nothing we can do for second life that a that even a majority of people would think was important uh, it is our experience it has been my experience for the whole of the slightly over 4 years that i've been here now that every single thing we do the response is one minority says um that's really great. That's really wonderful. It's exactly what we've been waiting for. Um, and another different size minority, sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller, says, oh, my God, I can't believe you've wasted all that time and energy doing that. It's totally irrelevant to me. It has nothing to do with anything. No one will care. Um, and, and we get both reactions for every single thing we do. Everything. Yeah, that, that's uh, just a cop out. Oz. I don't buy that well, one for one second. It's a cop out. Everybody, everybody knows there will be people to agree and disagree. And if you adopt this defeated tactic that we cannot do right, every always be somebody no, no, no. who will be complaining. Yeah, then, don't 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 the, misunderstand the, me. What what I mean? Ob objective things that can be do, done that will help improve the platform world. It's not always this relativistic everybody some somebody will complain. Well, so um the, the, the my point isn't that you know we can't we can't win. That's that's not my point at all. My point is that we we, we can't we shouldn't be looking for the one thing we can do that will make everybody happy because it probably doesn't exist. What we should instead be doing is and what we are trying to do is do, uh, you know, many things that will make many different groups of people happy. 
that's uh, you know we want to we want to do things that uh, make people who are here to uh, you know enjoy fashion happy. We want to make do things that are here for people who want to do game like experiences happy. We want to do things that for people who want to who want to do beautiful 3D building happy. Um, you know there 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 are different things we can do for different audiences, and we have to do a lot of them. Right, stability and performance, uh, to the extent that you can generalize them, um, is good. But it's also, to tell you the truth, um, not something that users have a very good way of measuring, um, because it's so extremely variable, both per user and depending on the circumstances. Right? Uh, I mean, we have we have lots of users and i'm completely at a loss to explain this but we have lots of users who are experiencing just absurdly high crash rates and yet they come back um, yeah. people are used <laughs> to crashing it's just part well, of this accepted uh, yeah see i i just don't it's get very that strange. I, I mean i i really don't I, I, you know i look at i look at some of the data we have about how frequently some people crash and i just i just can't understand why after the 12th time they launched the program at all uh, you know i speak to people constantly that are on version 442 especially mac people and they're perfectly happy on 442 not seeing materials or mesh avatars one person said to me i said but you know you don't see uh, fitted mesh they said no i just de-render them <laughs> so you go to a place and you de-render everybody okay <laughs> that's immersive or you could just update i don't yeah i don't know it's strange yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, anyway, I think that there are a lot of things we could do. I mean, I, I, like I said, we're going through this kind of planning process right now, and we have a, a really long list that keeps growing of, of things that we can do. Um, and um, obviously, doing some performance-related things and many stability-related things are very much on the on the list. But there's also a lot of uh, new feature stuff that's on the list. So, uh, yeah, and moving to newer compilers is definitely on the list. Uh, mm, okay. What about am I, I going to say it? What, sorry, what did you say, Tank? What about 64-bit support in the future as well as the newer That's, It's on the list. Uh, you know whether or not it's something that'll get picked. I I, I couldn't predict right. just, just now. Right. Um, it's definitely on the on the things to consider. The the big question mark there is, is I don't mind telling you the big question mark there is what's the incremental benefit we would get for building a 64 bit app that we don't already get because people are running the current app on 64 bit platforms. If if you know somebody who's got hardware that will run a 64-bit OS and they're not running a 64-bit OS, tell them to reinstall their hardware, their OS, right? But the you, people you who are on the 64-bit platforms are getting much better crash rates than the people on 32-bit platforms. But um, you get a lower crash rate yet with 64-bit applications. Well, the question is, what's the what's the incremental benefit? And that's... You know, I, I believe that, and I believe That's that we would. That's a question a working statistics system can solve. Well, unfortunately, you have to have something to measure in order to have a statistics on it. But but we have uh, doesn't uh, Firestorm and Singularity support both, so you can actually see the numbers. Um, yeah, if our stats system broke it down that way, which unfortunately at this point it doesn't. But. Which was my point to begin with. Yeah, if you no, had no, a yeah. Stat system, you could actually tell you have all the data. Yeah. Oh, believe me, I've made that argument. Um, I did just get a new round of. In fact, I haven't even had a chance to really dig into the results. Uh, I just did get some pretty significant upgrades to our our, our reports on our own viewers, um, and uh, I hope I will be able to get some of that for third party viewers pretty soon too. Do I say it now? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. Okay, have a good weekend, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> See you in a month. So it's a month then, right? Yeah, in a month. It? It's a month. Wow. 
It's going to um, be a month of speculation about Second Life. A lot life can too. happen in a month. <laughs> That's a, a yeah, long time for SLU to, to write you, about stuff. You, uh, you, you know how to reach me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gone. Have All a good right. weekend. Bye. Despite, despite everything. Mm. Thanks Take for your care. time, Oz, and tell Ebby is the same. I will certainly do that. Have a good weekend.